So the question is, when you look at your own life, and this is like a philosophy lens, like what does it mean to have meaning and purpose in your life? And how does that coincide with paying for eggs? Because it does. Fishy says, how do you know what your game is? It depends on what you're basing it on. I recommend basing it off your joy. This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. More on that later. With just four words, a famous TikToker has managed to piss off everyone, leading to dozens of celebrities losing millions of followers across the internet and people celebrating the end of celebrities. We need to remind these people that we're the reason they have money. These celebrities have ascended into almost a godlike tier in society when they don't realize that we're the reason that they're famous in the first place. But why? I mean, I mean, they do realize you're the reason they're famous in the first place. But do you realize they're famous because of you in the first place? Because as much as you're saying it, do you actually get it? Cancellations are usually pretty focused, so what happened? Well, this all centers around influencer Haley Khalil, aka Haley Bailey, attending the Haley Bailey. K Ray D, thank you so much for joining memberships, girl. Welcome. Met Gala. Now, in short, the Met Gala is an annual fundraiser for the Met's fashion division where a bunch of rich and famous people have their photos taken so that their outfits can be made fun of in videos that get millions of views. All these leading lines, everything's just pointing to your crotch. Maybe that's what you wanted. Maybe Dua Lipa's proud of her crotch. It looks like she's a character in a movie where the characters went back in time and, yeah. and ran into their mom. Well, Haley is a model who has amassed a huge following online, especially on TikTok. And while for the most part, her content is known for being pretty safe and inoffensive, usually sticking to relatable humor or trends, that all changed with just one TikTok, and it's not one you'd expect. Let them eat cake. Please like the stream. When I get copyrighted, I lose revenue, okay? I don't wanna get monetized in all my videos because, well, sometimes there's music in it. Basically, that quote is the quote that people think of when talking about class inequality. Because the last queen of France, Marie Antoinette, was believed to have made a similar comment when asked about the peasants starving in the midst of a famine. So while solving a food shortage is incredibly complex and requires a great deal of effort, this figure of royalty couldn't be bothered to do more than provide a single sentence that doesn't actually address the issue. Because, well, as an elite, why should she care about the suffering of so-called peasants. So, okay, maybe that's a cringy quote coming from a TikToker, but influencers thinking too highly of themselves is nothing new, right? So why would that lead to outrage? Well, if you've paid bills in the last few years, you might get why. There's a growing sentiment from young people that the current state of things is atrocious, that if you're not in the top 1%, you are being made unable to have a reasonable quality of life. A college graduate is spending the same amount of their income on rent as the minimum wage worker in 1980 did. We are far more productive than yeah. previous generations. We are more employed. Yeah. We are more educated than previous generations. Yeah. And that's not computing. And any attempt to get those at the top of society to address it usually results in a pretty out of touch response. If you only want to work four hours, it's going to be harder for you to get a house. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal, for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's gonna be much more affordable. Shout out to my girlies that eat breakfast for dinner. I have some friends that actually do eat cereal for dinner because that's their preferred meal. Most people aren't gonna wanna eat cereal for dinner. I will say there's always gonna be a balance between adapting to the changes and understanding that even though it's harder than our parents had it, it's easier than our ancestors had it. And also it is going to be hard, but no one ever said life was gonna be easy and none of us were Nepo babies, so. For all the shit Nepo babies get, let me tell you how much life would be amazing if we were one. In that sense, if the struggle is financial, then being a Nepo baby is a perk. If your goal is to hate Nepo babies, I can't fe I can't help but feel like you're a little jealous or envious. But also, I understand how frustrating it is to hear a Nepo baby say, I got here on my own. Nepo baby. Nepo baby? Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that whole sitch? I, you know, when that first started, I found it to be uh, like incredibly annoying and <laughs> and boring like yeah. if you're a journalist write about something else yeah it's just yeah. like lame yeah uh so the opportunity to make fun of it i jumped at yeah, of course you did <laughs> i know that's frustrating so the question is when you look at your own life and this is like a philosophy lens like what does it mean to have meaning and purpose in your life and how does that coincide with paying for eggs because it does but also you have to learn the difference between survival mode and living mode and which one you are you in and so many people are in survival mode they don't want to hear about living mode which is so fair so all those people that think it's like easy it's not easy but it's certainly not as hard as it was but it certainly isn't as easy as it could be and it's definitely not as efficient as it could be. So what should have been a forgettable TikTok was actually the perfect storm. I mean, you have an event where tickets cost $75,000 at a time where everyday people are struggling to afford groceries mm. and such a quote is being said by someone who is incredibly wealthy. We're inside a $17,000 a month apartment in Soho. 
Let's check it out. Despite having a job that is often considered overpaid and ultimately unneeded in society, thus begins the hashtag <laughs> blockout 2024. Okay, so this whole trend. I really don't like this idea of like, oh, that job is unneeded in society. Um, I mean like existing is unneeded, but here we are. Of blocking celebrities has got to be the best thing to ever happen to the internet. We got Kim. I do think this is a good idea. If enough people did this, this would be so funny. Kardashian to lose 3 million followers. That's pretty great. We're just straight up blocking these out of touch with reality celebrities. I commend you. Yeah, blocking celebrities is now a trend. This idea seemed to originate from at Blockout 2024 on TikTok. Block celebrities on social media so they don't earn ad revenue from you. And beyond just social standing, this is meant to possibly impact the pockets of celebrity. So if millions of people do this, then it stands to reason that this would cause a larger dent, right? So this started with the creator Blockout posting a daily list of celebrities you should block, though he later encouraged others to post their own list. People are messaging me asking me to post more about this, post more about that. Mm -hmm. You guys need to all post more about it if you want this to work. I actually, I really like this campaign because I think it is the least harmful, but like with possibly the most impact. So I actually think it's a really good idea. Plus, I don't follow, like I don't follow anyone on social media. I really should just block people when they come across. I usually block everybody who comes across my feed that I'm annoyed by, but I think this is like really reasonable, right? Miss Fitchie says blocking celebrities because money feels a little childish unless you don't want to see them. That's different. No, I actually think, okay, if you're doing a marketing campaign and you're saying, I want to change the state of how things work, then you do it with the least amount of harm. And this exhibits the least amount of harm, right? So we know harm is always like a part of activism. It's just like the reality of every, I mean, daily life is, you know, going to have harm. But I think in terms of little to no harm, but also with the biggest impact, it is social media stuff. So blocking people, not giving them the time of day. But of course, in the long run, the biggest impact is going to be understanding policy and impacting politics. And celebrities aren't politics, but celebrities feel good. So in some ways it is childish because it's not really impacting the things you think it is impacting because there's always going to be new celebrities, but also it's about why you're doing it. So Leachin says the company I work for moved out of state and fired everyone by email last week. Gen Z's complaints about work are totally valid. It's not about validity, but it is about validity. So first you're valid. Then what do you do about it? You recognize the market that you're in. Remember, you are not living through the depression. You have got to compare yourself to at least you're not in this situation because genuinely if you don't you're not going to have any understanding of how bad it could get so it's bad but it's not as bad as it could get and that is something that is so specific and this really helps me so maybe it's not a tool that helps you gen z is in a really difficult market the whole world is right and that's why people do their own thing hell it's why i do my own thing because i cannot compete in this market i don't know why you're doing it either why do you think you're competing in the market i am better working 12 to 15 hours a day doing youtube to make millions middle class living than I would ever be trying to compete in the market. So the question is, why are you competing in the market that is specifically those jobs? Why are you working a job that's going to email you? You're fired, right? And then pick and choose the game that makes sense for you. Because this is so important. You are playing a specific game that no one else is playing. So all your feelings are valid. The struggle is real. The, like It's always difficult. No, like I'm not trying to take that away from you, right? Some people might be trying. I'm not trying to take that away from you. It's not easy. Landlords suck. Everything is too high. The efficiency in America sucks. Everything is a struggle. The question is, why why do you keep picking the struggle? And often it's because people think it's the only struggle they can play at. And I'm just letting you know you can play a different game, but it's up to you which one you want to play. It's not about competing against other people. It's about you finding your joy and meaning, right? So again, you're valid. I don't want to take that away from you. But also, why is this the game we're playing? Because that's what's so interesting. But then people pick what's comfortable. They pick what people tell them to pick. They play the game they think everyone is playing. I'm not playing that game. Fishy says, how do you know what your game is? It depends on what you're basing it on. I recommend basing it off your joy. Playing to your strengths. First of all, do you even know what your strengths are? Do you know what your strength is? Play to your strength. Play to what you know you can do and understand no matter how good your job is, it still has the word job in it. So the question is, even though it's going to be stressful, what's the stress you want to handle every day? Because life itself is stressful. So the question is, what stress do you want to handle every day? That's like, what's the key here? Fishy says, do you ever sometimes have to play a game you don't want to have to play? but it's kind of the only reasonable route to the game. Yes, I have to show up to work at time when I don't want to. I have to, I have to play so many games I don't want to play. I wake up every day and play games I don't want to play. That's absolutely life. You always have to play games you don't want to play. So there's the big game, then there's the mini games in your big game. So my life is perfect. It's exactly what I want. 
but you have to play the mini games that suck. So like maybe it's I have to stream at certain hours of the day and I don't have a choice when I get to stream because if I stream at any other time, I'm not going to get the right audience, which means I won't be watched the most. Or I have to switch my content to a specific kind of genre to adapt to the market. I don't want to do that, but fuck, I'll do it for the bag, right? It's a job. It's life. Leechin says I'm a teacher. We're always screwed. Teaching. You have to work a lot after hours. Sometimes you don't have the resources. Sometimes you have to use your own money to buy paper and pens for your classroom. But the bigger game you're playing as an educator is probably more fulfilling. Fishy says, God, how does one radically accept that? In time. When I radically accepted that part of my life, when I've moved on, it is so much better. My life is so fucking good because I am allowed to acknowledge that this is the game I'm playing on the macro and micro that I know for a fact, no matter what I do, I will always labor because life is about labor. Going into labor is labor. Stop pretending that life isn't about labor. Existing itself is labor. Having a baby is labor. The reason we discount working mothers or discount, sorry, stay-at-home parents is because we think it's not labor. It is labor. Existing itself is labor. If you have decided to keep living, you have decided to labor. The question is, in what form do you want to labor? And how does it work within reality? And how do you move forward? That is so specific to you as the individual. Celia says, girl, how do I radically accept period? girl. It depends on how your brain works. So this is hard for me to answer because it really depends on the individual, right? Which is why I do calls with people. It's why I do stuff with people one-on-one -on -one because it's really specific to the individual. Your values, number one, your code of conduct, number two, your understanding of how the world works, your place in the world. And then you got to be a whole human being. Figure out your financial health and goals, your physical health and goals, your spiritual health and goals. That's your philosophy. Okay. Your mental health. Then who are you in the story? Who are you in the anime? You got to know everything about yourself, even though you'll never know everything about yourself. You feel me? You got to know everything about how you work from head to toe, even though there will be parts of you and you're like, that's a mystery that's new. And then you'll know exactly what to do. Even when it's stressful, even in my own job, I have moments where I'm like, oh God, I have to adapt. I have to change. And I don't know for the audience, it might be confusing, but for me, I'm just like, holy fuck, I have to adapt. I have to change. I have to move things. I'm always like figuring out what the next move is because that's the industry I chose. So the audience is here for like what, whatever reason you're here, but I know why I'm here. See, I'm not even sure why you're here, but I know why the fuck I'm here. And I'm honored that you're here with me, but it's see how I'm focused on me and what I'm doing. And I think if I do it right, I I will garner the right audience, which I have. I really love my audience. It makes coming to work really lovely every day. Fishy says, sounds like it's about maximizing and optimizing your game. It's about knowing yourself enough to do that in the first place. Fishy says, that's my problem. Yes, I don't care about labor, but how I labor. Haven't accepted sometimes I have to labor in ways I don't like. In the long game, lack of tools. Hey, that's life. No problem because that takes time and effort and then you'll find it and it won't be a big deal. But everyone has to go through the journey. Like everyone does have to go through the journey. And the question is, what is your journey going to look like? That's really the question. But learning about yourself, I hope when we watch these videos, we're using it to learn about ourselves. That's really what I want you guys to think about when we're watching these, these videos together. How does this relate to me? How do I make sure that I'm not this person that I seem to dislike? Or how do I make sure I'm really playing to my strength? So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool